There's a proverb in the Old Testament that says, The one who states his case first seems right, until the other comes and examines him. So it's been about two years since the controversy kind of broke about Mick Gordon's original soundtrack to Doom Eternal. And after all of this time, he has responded to the original Reddit post from Marty Stratton explaining why there were problems with the Doom Eternal soundtrack. So we're going to have to talk about it. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you're unfamiliar with the story, basically what happened was that when the collector's edition of Doom Eternal was released, it was promised that Mick Gordon's original soundtrack would be included with it. But ultimately that was delayed and it was unclear why. And when it finally was released weeks later, there were a lot of problems with it quality wise. Mick Gordon explained that these issues were not his fault and there was a whole lot of speculation as to why there were problems in the first place. There was speculation about Mick Gordon being rushed and not being given creative freedom. This eventually got really ugly and eventually the head of id software, Marty Stratton, came out and released a statement on Reddit and he basically explained that he believed that these issues were ultimately the responsibility of Mick Gordon. He talked about how Mick Gordon would supposedly miss deadlines and things like that and ultimately he ended up having to hand the responsibility over to the head of sound design at id software. This basically, for the most part, from what I could tell, turned the attention away from id Software and put it back onto Mick Gordon. And most, I think, id Software fans took a lot of the heat off of id Software and they went ahead and let the responsibility rest on Mick Gordon in their eyes. I eventually summarized this in a video of my own a couple years ago. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you would like that sort of outdated take at this point. But today, Mick Gordon released a statement, as I mentioned, and it is much more meticulous and long than Marty Stratton's original statement was. And it paints a pretty ugly picture, if it is indeed accurate. Now, initially, uh, I will admit I was very sympathetic to Marty Stratton's uh, presentation of things. It seemed to make logical sense at the time. But I'd say there was one aspect of it that I didn't really mention at the time. There was one place in the statement that he made where I perhaps was willing to poke some holes and ask some questions. And really that had to do with the way that Marty Stratton seemed to sort of gloss over the way that the original soundtrack was announced. This was done at E3 before the game was released and it promised a lot in terms of the original soundtrack being included with the collector's edition. He basically started his statement talking about how there had already been issues up to that point, but he didn't get into a lot of details. And I thought that if there were details that Marty Stratton was glossing over, it would be somewhere in that area. And so this was one example of many where Mick Gordon talked about what he believed were basically impossible deadlines that basically dominoed and made his job feel impossible to him. And so basically, there, there's no way I'm going to dig into all of the details of the statement released by Mick Gordon. There's simply too much there. But some of the basic accusations he throws at Marty Stratton are that, again, there were impossible deadlines and that he wasn't listened to when he tried to show what the problems were going to be, and he ultimately was proven right. He then has what seemed to be a lot of receipts showing that the statements that Marty Stratton made were inconsistent with the contracts that were agreed upon between id Software and McGordon. And so, like I said before, my initial thoughts on... Marty Stratton's statement were pretty favorable, but there were those sort of details that I was willing to sort of consider poking holes into, although I was largely sympathetic. If I were to do the same thing to Mick Gordon's statement here, I think the things that we would have to take with a bit of a grain of salt would be his characterizations of the conversations he had with Marty Stratton that are not documented. Again, I'm not saying whether I believe him or don't believe him. I'm simply saying that in between all of these receipts that he brought along, all of these screenshots that he has of messages and these contracts that were signed, he gives explanations of these conversations that he had with Marty Stratton and how harsh Marty Stratton was and how critical he was and how ultimately he was not a pleasant person to work with. And so while Mick Gordon's you know, receipts and screenshots and documentation lend credence to what he's saying, you still have to decide whether or not you believe these interactions verbally with Marty Stratton were as Mick Gordon characterized them. And that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to believe one way or the other. But in the end, it definitely seems that Mick Gordon is bringing far more evidence to bear than Marty Stratton did. Now, all that being said, there's a basic principle that I tend to 
bring with me as I encounter controversies like this. And it's something that I think a lot more people need to learn to do. We need to realize that every single person is the hero of their own story. That applies to Mick Gordon and it applies to Marty Stratton. It seems clear to me that Marty Stratton was interacting with Mick Gordon, assuming all of his characterizations of Marty Stratton's behavior are correct. It seems that Marty Stratton approached a lot of these interactions with a lot of anger. He was basically exasperated with the relationship he had with Mick Gordon. He felt Mick Gordon wasn't following through on his deadlines, and he ultimately felt in the end that he needed to protect his own reputation. And then in turn, Mick Gordon felt that Marty Stratton was being impatient and was acting in bad faith and ultimately was willing to throw him under the bus. Now, I'm not saying that truth is relative here. I'm not saying that both of them are equally right, and I'm not saying that there's no way to understand who's in the wrong here. At the time being, it does seem that Marty Stratton was in the wrong. All that I'm saying is that we need to rid ourselves of any idea that there's somebody here who is basically uh, in a dark room twisting their mustache trying to hurt another person. Ultimately, I think everyone was acting in their own self-interest. But apparently, not everyone was able to do that in a mature manner. So there's ultimately only a few possible outcomes that I see coming out of this. One is that Marty Stratton is going to come out and try to vindicate himself, or some representative from id Software is going to do this. And this is going to either succeed with the fans or it's not. It seems far-fetched at this point that there is any chance that any of this evidence can ultimately be explained away. But I think that that's one possibility, that Marty Stratton or a representative from Software is going to come out and try to do that. And that's going to satisfy the fans, or it's not going to satisfy the fans. Or it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Or ultimately, I think Marty Stratton will come out and genuinely apologize for all that happened to Mick Gordon. And things will ultimately be resolved in that way. And he will ultimately try to make financial amends in some way. The third possibility is that Marty Stratton and id Software are ultimately going to say nothing, and they're going to ignore this story altogether. And as a result, nothing is going to change. And one final possibility is that there will be consequences, and Marty Stratton is going to either be removed or he's going to resign. This with or without an apology. Who knows? I'd love to know in the comments which of these possibilities you think is going to come to fruition. My suspicion at this point is that there really is no way that id Software is going to avoid this controversy. If Marty Stratton couldn't avoid commenting on this controversy initially, I don't think he's going to avoid it now. I think we are eventually, though it may not be immediately, we are eventually going to see some kind of statement about this. Ultimately, I think it's going to be some combination of trying to justify id Software and Marty Stratton and some measure of an apology. I don't know what combination that's going to be. And perhaps there will be a little bit more information released that gives a little bit more context to the evidence that McGordon brought forward. But again, I think it's a long shot that there's going to be enough there that's going to explain all of this away. And so that's really the best prediction that I have at the moment. Again, if you have a prediction and if you have some thoughts, uh, make sure you comment below. And so ultimately, this is a frustrating, kind of sad situation. I think, again, it needs to be dealt with. And I think id Software is going to try. And I hope they do. I hope that some resolution comes out of this because ultimately, if it stays the way it is and if it's unaddressed, I think that there's no avoiding the fans having a bad taste in their mouth as we head into whatever new project id Software has in the works. But in its present form, this could do a lot of damage if nothing is done about it. So there's my thoughts. I hope they were helpful in some way as you think this through. Again, comment below if you have your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, make sure you leave a like. My name is Eric. This is Crossplay Gaming. If you enjoy content like this or you enjoy gaming streams and things like that, make sure that you leave a like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you know when new uploads happen. And we'll see you around in the next one. Thanks for watching.